To balance this double displacement reaction, we have sodium carbonate and aluminum chloride. Let's count the atoms up on each side of the equation. We have two sodiums, and we're going to use a bit of a trick here with this double displacement reaction. Often you'll have these polyatomic ions like CO3, that's the carbonate ion. You'll have it here, and then again, we have it here. We're going to count it as one thing. That'll simplify balancing the equation. We then have one aluminum and three chlorines. On the product side, we have one sodium, one carbonate times three. That'll give us three of those, two aluminums, and then chlorines, we have one of those. Let's start by balancing. Why don't we do the aluminums first and see what happens with that? We could put a two in front of the AlCl3. One times two, that'll balance the aluminum. So we have two aluminums, and then two times three, that gives us six of these chlorines. We could fix that though. We could put a six here in front of the NaCl. We have one chlorine times six. That'll give us six of those. Those are balanced. One sodium times six. That'll give us six of those. Might as well balance the sodiums next. If we put a three in front of the Na2CO3, sodium carbonate, two times three, that gives us six. Those are balanced. We have one carbonate here times three gives us three carbonates and we're done. This equation is balanced. So by counting these polyatomic ions as just one item, it just makes it a lot simpler when you balance. As long as you have them on both sides of the equation, it works. Either way, you get the same answer. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for Na2CO3 plus AlCl3. Thanks for watching.